All right, YouTube, I want to get on here and talk about a little pressing issue that's been circulating our nation for the better part of the last year and a half. I've kind of talked about it a little bit here, there, and everywhere, but haven't really made any, like, big projects or videos on it or anything like that. But So tonight I wanted to get on here and make this topic because I've been reading a lot of news articles and obviously someone who studied a lot about law and crime and whatnot. This is a topic that's very interesting to me. But at the same time, this whole thing that's been going on is quite, is quite fucking shocking and it's getting pretty scary and it's getting more and more ridiculous by the day. So, so first of all, the issue with crime in the U.S. and whatnot. Now I know some, like me, I make my, you know, crime statistics, my laws with regards to like, you know, my creative writing. I made stuff about that. A lot of you guys know about that, but, but the issue with crime in the U S and what's going on with crime in the U S today, it's bad, but it doesn't paint the whole picture. Okay. So like, for example, there's a lot of, and it, first of all, both sides are not fucking dealing with this issue properly. Like they're really not. And, and I'm just going to come out and say that. And, and this video is not meant to be political. It's not here to fucking bitch about the left or the right or the Democrats or the Republicans and blah, blah, fucking blah. That's not even the point of this video. That's not even my intent. It's not even my intention to talk about either one of those morons. This issue is a, is a problem that's affecting people's lives. So... I mean, I'm going to be referencing who I think is to blame, who's not doing enough to deal with this issue and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I'm really going to be discussing tonight in, in this video going forward, here, there, and everywhere. But it, it basically just comes down to there is a homicide surge that swept the U.S. after COVID-19 hit the U.S. for the first time and hit worldwide. Now, obviously, when people were staying home, businesses were closed and whatnot, yeah, crime continued to decline just like it has since much of the 1990s. And crime in the U.S. was, was rampant throughout much of the 1960s, 70s, even 80s. In the 1980s was when crime was the worst in the U.S. And the early 1990s was probably when it was the worst, in the late 1980s, early 1990s. And then after, you know, Bill Clinton got tough on crime and to, to a pretty, you know, extent where a lot of his tough on crime policies I agreed with, the other things like locking people up for stupid shit like drugs, like a little bit of drugs and whatnot, not necessarily, but, but I think the issue on getting tough on like violent crime was good because it paved the way for a significant crime decline that swept the U.S. for, much, for, for a very, very long time and made the U.S. a hell of a lot safer. And it, it continued, yeah, it spiked a couple times throughout the years, but declined again. But between the COVID pandemic and this year, 2020 to 2021, was the worst surge in homicide since like the beginning of time. It was one of the worst homicide increases ever recorded. And it increased after people started going out more. It open, you know, businesses started opening back up and whatnot. So obviously, when people came out, people were coming out of their homes all fucking screwed up, and people just lost respect for other human beings. There's just this, just this blatant like disregard for human life just went rampant, and people just lost their fucking minds. And, and people just lost their fucking minds. And then that led to a big surge in shootings and murders and things like that. That drove the U.S.'s homicide rate through the fucking roof. And it has continued into 2021, but at a slower pace. So for it to continue at a slower pace is a good thing. Because it's like, oh, it's slowly, it's slow. It, it, yeah, it's still increasing, which is not a good fucking thing. But... I think what's happening is, is we're seeing a slow, we're seeing a much slower increase this year as opposed to last year, and hopefully it will start to go back down and start declining again. One can only hope. But the worst thing about it is, 
really the biggest thing that's been surging is, is murders, the worst crime of all, where a life is taken intentionally. That's the worst thing about it. Whereas property crime remains at or near historic lows and other violent crimes like assault and rape, robbery, whatever, has, has increased but at a much smaller rate. So when it so like whenever like one side is sitting there being like so like so like when when one fucking side is sitting there fearing about crime in the US and sitting there fucking fearing about it. Now see this is the double edged sword with regards to crime today. The issue is it's not as bad as it's it doesn't paint the whole picture. So so like this homicide surge that has happened it doesn't paint the whole picture. And here's the other thing that doesn't paint the whole picture. The other thing that doesn't paint the whole picture is the people that are sitting there thinking it's not that big of a deal and we can, you know, whatever. So like the people that are downplaying it are just as fucking stupid as the people that are sitting there, you know, that are sitting there being like, oh, crime is worse than it ever was and whatnot. Wrong. First of all, despite the slight increase in overall violent crime and the dramatic increase in homicides, crime in the U.S. is still lower than it was in the late 80s and early 90s. That is a fact. And I'm not worried about it going back to the 19, to like 1988, 1989 levels. I don't see that happening anytime in the foreseeable future. I just don't. And I just don't because the we have we're in a different time zone than we are then. We're we're in a much different time zone than when Paula Abdul was out there releasing her newest fucking album. <laughs> I mean, you know, like we're in different times, people. We're in different times. We have more policing, more resources, and shit like that. So it's we have better tools to defeat crime and solve murders and shit like that as we did back in like 1988 and the whatever, 1988, 1989, early 90s, whatever. But then people that are going to sit there and downplay this and think that, oh, we need to continue to let people out of prison early because of COVID and blah, 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 and things like that. No, fucking wrong. We should not be doing that. No, we should not be doing that. These people should be in fucking prison, some even for life. And and then there's people out there still opposing the death penalty and out there saying, we need to eliminate the death penalty in the U.S. And there have been significantly less executions in the U.S. because of COVID and whatnot. And that's not the way to go either. And Joe Biden is not taking this seriously. And I'm not even, like I said, this is not to be fucking political. This is not meant to get on to a political tangent about this one or that one or who did this wrong, who did this one right. This is not about Joe Biden. This is not about Trump. This is not about really anybody for that matter. This is about an issue that is facing our fucking country. But the only time I'm going to be referencing political figures in, this, in these scenarios is when I'm referencing people on this part, people on this side, and yada, yada, yada. That's all I'm trying to do. So, like when I say about Joe Biden, okay, number one, Joe Biden was a big, tough-on-crime guy back in the 1990s. He wrote a significant portion of Bill Clinton's crime bill that he passed in 1994 that actually led to the U.S.'s crime rate falling significantly. Now, that's not to say that the crime bill didn't have a lot of bad things about it, because it did. It did disproportionately target a lot of racial minorities. You know, people went to prison for minor drug offenses, sit for significantly long periods of time. Well, some many can argue the drug war was already in place since like Richard Nixon's tenure in the 70s and whatnot. So yeah, like like the drug war, let's be honest, the drug war was fucking stupid. We should have ended it years ago. It was stupid, it never led. And I can see the drug war dying down because more and more people are getting let off from marijuana. People have a little bit of marijuana, most scenarios, even in the South, even in more conservative areas, more, more and more people are getting written off with a ticket and just say, here you go, here, pay this ticket like a traffic ticket, here, you go about your merry way, whatever, goodbye. It's just shit like that. So, yeah, so the crime bill, yeah, wasn't good in a lot of that, but the, but the portions of it locking people up for significantly longer periods of time and paving the way for stricter sentences for dangerous criminals, I completely agree with that. 
because there's certain people that do not deserve to be out on the streets for a very long time, if not ever again for the rest of their lives. Certain people should not be kept around on the streets. They just should not be. They should not be in society for a very long time, if not for the rest of their lives. So yes, I am in full agreement with those portions, and that's what led it. So Joe Biden was all for this. Now as president, he claims to be, like you said during the debates, I'm not for minimum mandatories. So you're going to sit there and you're going to come on and argue that when we have a, the worst surge in homicides in a long time, in decades in this country, even though the homicide rate is still lower than it was in the 90s, in the 80s, and, and so on and so forth, it's still, this increase is not good. The increase did not bring us back to where crime was in like 1985, 1987, 1988, and I don't see it going back that way at any time in the foreseeable future because it's already starting to slow. It's probably going to decline again sooner. It's probably going to decline sooner or later. Again, it's, it's going to, crime is going to go up and down, up and down here, there, and everywhere. It's going to probably, it's probably going to plummet again in the next few years. Who knows, you know? We're already seeing a slower increase in it this year. It's not good because, but... So Joe Biden's out there and like he's getting lower marks on the issue of crime because Joe Biden is not doing nearly enough. He is not doing nearly enough. And now you got the now you got the people on this side, the right wingers that'll bitch about Joe Biden no matter what the fuck he does. Even if Joe Biden like even when he's doing the bidding for the Republicans, they're going to sit there and bitch about him no matter what they do. Just like when Obama, Obama did something, it was it was never fucking good enough. Just like when Republicans want to get tougher on crime. Joe Biden's out there being like, oh, well, they're, you know, they're Democrats, they're, they're, they're this and that. Well, no, uh, the Republicans, we need to do criminal justice reform, which is, a, which is a stupid, which is a sloppy, grotesque, false equivalent. It's, it's, it's like a, it's basically a distraction. It's like, give it, it's like a distraction. It's like a slap on the wrist. We can do criminal justice reform without giving criminal slaps on the fucking wrist. And this is the thing about Donald Trump. This is one of the other things. He reinstated the, the U.S.'s national death penalty to be given for certain national capital crimes. Trump re resumed federal executions in the U.S. and led like 10 or 12 of them on the last year of his presidency. And that's actually one thing I agreed with because the people he put to death were horrible murderers. Horrible murderers. And Lisa Montgomery, I think her name was, I might be butchering the name, she murdered a pregnant woman and kidnapped the fetus of the baby? You're going to tell me that that person deserves to live? Nah, fuck no, get the fuck out of here. No, absolutely not. So on that issue, I actually agreed with Trump on certain things about, I mean, obviously I fucking despise the guy in just about everything else, but that's a whole nother story. So the whole thing is, is like, and then when Joe Biden gets in, what does he do? He halts federal executions again at a time when, the U.S. is having a surge in homicides and a surge in violent crime, which is the wrong move. We should be showing these criminals that, listen, we're going to continue this. We can do criminal justice reform, but at the same, which is necessary because racial discrimination in the criminal justice system of this country is a significant problem, and it has been for many decades, and it still is. We can acknowledge that, that there are certain racial minorities especially black people that are getting worse penalties for drugs or violent crime as opposed to white people. We can acknowledge that. But the double-edged sword is we have to sit there and say, no, we are going to continue pushing for strict penalties up to and including death if it is the most extreme circumstances, and we're going to continue it and say that we will do criminal justice reform we will do it for people who deserve it, like nonviolent drug offenders and stuff like that. I completely agree. Release all nonviolent drug offenders. I am totally for that. They shouldn't be in prison because many would argue prison makes the drug problem worse. It really does. They need treatment. They might need maybe make them pay a fine, go to court, pay a fine, make them go in mandatory drug rehab and things like that. You know, go after like the, the dangerous drug kingpins and you know, the armed robbers, the bad people, not those people. Yes, we need to do criminal justice reform, and, 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 and I'm even taking a libertarian argument. Like, many people say, yeah, just like, if, if, if it has no victim, it shouldn't be a crime. Decriminalize nonviolent things that just shouldn't be crimes, like a little bit of marijuana and fucking shit like that. Like, you know, st stuff like that. But continue, but continue the tough-on-crime issue. 
That's what we need to do. And that's what Joe Biden is not doing. He, he, he has been meeting with law and people, members of the law enforcement community and stuff like that. But, but I think it's just, he's trying to fucking do it to try to save face because he's, he's dropping in approval and everything else. He's dropping in approval rapidly because he's, he's also completely incompetent on many issues. Crime is definitely one of them. Crime is definitely one of them. It's probably the sorest issue of his presidency right now. He has the opportunity to continue this. He could simply resume federal executions with the touch of a pen. He could do that. Law enforcement communities could do the same. That's what we need to do. So, so, so like, it is slowing. The surge in violent crime is slowing again, and it might even decline at some point later. Hopefully. But we need to continue this and not be giving people slaps on the wrist for stupid, for fucking dangerous, violent offenses. The whole criminal justice reform on nonviolent drugs, absolutely, I am fully in agreement with that. Completely legalize marijuana, 100%. Decriminalize everything else, yes. You know, certain things. Strictly regulate other things. And, you know, make like other like drug offenders, like heroin heads and crack heads or whatever. Just make them go to drug therapy, rehabilitation, make them pay a fine, whatever. Don't put them in jail for significantly long periods of time. And don't do this, don't do that, because the drug war obviously did, didn't do diddly dick. It, it only made the drug problem worse. So that's really the issue. So the issue of the surge in homicide, it was bad. It was devastating for every person who lost their fucking lives and for all the families that lost lives during this fucking homicide surge. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. But it just comes to show that there is such a fucking disregard for innocent human life. There is no fucking regard for innocent human life. And COVID just, when people were in their fucking houses and were staying away from everyone else, obviously crime continued to drop because barely anyone was up. So what's happening now? More people are out and about. Less, more, more people are out of work. More people were out of work. Some maybe even driven into poverty led them to go to resort to extreme options. Murdered people, stuff like that, the racial tensions, everything. Everything just went down the toilet. And then everything went down the toilet. The homicide rate surge went through the roof continued to go through the roof in 2021, but it's slowing towards the end of the year. So, to, to, so, so, so the double-edged sword is, is, is oh, it, it, crime today is worse than it was in the 1990s. No, wrong. It's significantly lower than it was even in 1991 when it was at the highest point ever. And it has significantly declined since then. And despite the homicide surge, which it was devastating, horrible, everything, it's still significantly lower than it was then. But at the same time, while it is significantly lower than it was in the late 80s, early 90s, and it probably will continue to be that for the foreseeable future, it's, like I said, it's probably going to decline again sooner or later. But we cannot sit there and deny this homicide surge because it is getting fucking scary. It's getting real bad. It, it, I don't see it going back to levels like it was during like the, the 80s, during the Reagan era and the... Janet Jackson and the Paula Abdul era, which actually was a good time for the music industry. But anyway, moving on, you know, it's like, uh, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not laughing about that. I'm just, I'm just trying to add a little, you know, add a little entertainment to this while I talk about a serious issue, kind of trying to bring light on the serious issues. But you, got, everyone who knows me and knows my channel knows my style. So no, we need to get serious on this homicide surge. It may be significantly lower than it was in the 80s and 90s, which is a good thing. That part is good. That's the good news. But the bad news is it's a significant problem. It is affecting cities across the US. From Houston to Los Angeles to Sacramento, many cities in Florida, there have even been certain surges in homicide in parts of where I live in Massachusetts. Not where I live directly, but actually Boston has actually seen a drop in homicides and violent crime, which is a good thing. But it's not good. And 
We need to get serious on this issue. And neither side knows what the fuck they're doing. Joe Biden is being weak on fucking crime. He can't, he's not doing anything. He's not taking this issue seriously enough. And him being opposed to the death penalty and Kamala Harris being opposed to the death penalty and shit like that. Which I'm going to bring to my next point. Kamala Harris was up, you know, when she was up against Tulsi Gabbard back in 2019. And, and Tulsi was going after her for her record on criminal justice and going after people and being a fucking hawk and being a, and being a corrupt asshole, which she is. I don't like that woman. But I love Tulsi, though. But anyway, you know, it just comes down to she was doing all that. And then Kamala Harris turned around and she's like, I have always been opposed to the death penalty. She's like trying to say that. She was trying to say that as an argument. Just like Joe Biden was trying to say that as an argument. Saying during the debates, no minimum mandatories. Even though Kamala Harris and Joe Biden were tough on crime before the left wing, before the far left, started getting like they are today, weak on crime, believing getting slaps on the wrist for crime. So what did Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have to do? They had to revert from their levels that they used to be back in the mid 90s, early 90s, even that late 90s, probably up until like the Obama era. And that's what they had to do. So they had to reverse course. Kamala Harris had to turn around and say, I've always been opposed to the death penalty. F fucking wrong. She was for the death penalty when she was attorney general, I think she was attorney general or prosecutor in California or some stupid shit. But she was there. She was doing all this stuff. And there she is out there doing this shit. Joe Biden, same thing. He was for the death penalty. He was for locking people up for stupid things like drugs, which I didn't agree with. But when they were out there calling out the real violent criminals I, and saying they deserve this sentence, this sentence, strict penalties, I'm 100% in agreement with that. And you know who else is in agreement? with positions like that channels that I watch and support like secular talk so yeah so we're seeing a homicide surge in this country and it's not good it may be lower than it was in the 80s and 90s but we cannot kid ourselves the homicide surge and the violent surge is real and it's scary we must do everything we can to protect ourselves and trust the police. And this is another thing. We need better policing. We need our communities to trust our polices, our police forces. And we need to acknowledge two things. Not all police are bad. I actually have a lot of respect for law enforcement. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I'm this big fucking nationalist asshole that's going to fucking nationalist right-wing asshole that's going to sit there and kiss the asses of whoever's doing this and that no matter what because they have a fucking badge. No, I'm not that way either. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit there and make fucking lame-ass claims like, oh yeah, defund the police and stupid shit like that. No, I don't believe that. We need to balance policing with safety and trust. Many police forces have lost trust. Look at what Derek Chauvin fucking did. Luckily, he's in fucking prison. Good. He's a piece of shit. And nobody's going to convince me otherwise. Him killing George Floyd also led to the surge in homicides because people saw that, lost their fucking minds, and lost respect for law enforcement in general. But both sides played into that. People were trying to sit there and playing, acting out like Floyd, George Floyd was a victim. He wasn't a victim. Derek Chauvin was an asshole. He's a piece of shit. But let's not kid ourselves. George Floyd was no innocent victim either. He didn't deserve to die. His family didn't deserve to suffer. And why Derek Chauvin is in prison and why I'm so fucking glad he's in prison is not just because of what he did. It's the effects that his crime against Floyd had on the rest of the U.S. Riots, everything else. Everyone is responsible for their own actions. Everyone is responsible for their own fucking actions. And they are. Everyone's responsible for their own actions. But let's not kid ourselves. That also led to a surge in homicides throughout the U.S. More people lost respect for the police. Vigilante justice started increasing. We need to protect ourselves. We can respect the police. We can acknowledge these things. You know what it all comes down to? A balance. Let's balance it out. 
Let's not be a bleeding heart liberal against fucking criminals. Let's not be weak on crime like Joe Biden is doing. Because what Joe Biden is doing on crime is not working. Maybe he'll turn around. I don't know. I can only hope. But let's hope. Let's just hope for the best. Let's just do a little balance in life. Let's, let's, let's do that. And think this through. And understand all of this. And acknowledge these problems. Let's not be bleeding heart fucking liberals either that believe in being weak on crime and doing this and where, the way the U.S. is headed. It's not good. It may be lower than it was in the 80s and 90s, but we can't kid ourselves. It's coming back. It's slowly creeping back up on us. And if we don't get serious soon, more people are going to lose their lives. More and more people are going to go fucking crazy. More and more criminals are going to run out and about where they shouldn't be as opposed to where they should be and be in fucking prison for a very long time, if not for the rest of their lives. That's where they should be. Let's do that. Let's bring the crime levels back to where they were prior to 2019 and so on and so forth, all the way where it was prior to that from like 1991 onward up until 2020. Let's get it back to those levels. We can do that. We have the tools to do so. So let's get serious on this issue. Let's not fool ourselves about the real problems, but we need to acknowledge that this is a serious issue, that this is affecting people's lives, that this is a problem that we need to resolve. It's happening. We need to get serious on it. And we can't just sit back either and bitch and moan about no matter what Joe Biden's going to fucking do. We have to give him the benefit of the doubt and understand this. But I'm not going to sit back and pretend like Joe Biden is that he's not. He's not handling this issue. He's not handling a lot of issues seriously enough. He's not the leadership that we needed after such a fucking disastrous previous presidency that we had. So yeah. This shit needs fixing. The homicide rate is already slowing. Let's hope it continues to slow and decline again and get back to the levels of where it was before. Let's make it lower. Let's make it as low as possible. And we can do that. Let's make it low where it should be. Because with a low homicide rate, it saves people's lives. And by saving people from homicide, we're saving lives. So let's continue to do so. And I'm saying all this from a mental health perspective for which I study in and work from within. But I'm also saying this from a legal perspective, which I also studied in. Less so than mental health, but I also you know, do a lot of this stuff. This is where I got my information about the Pogo Islands and, where, and how I created that into a story of which it is today because this is how it should be. Those laws are based on my, how I think things should be. And that's how it should be in the real world. My creative writing, my laws and all that is where things should be. Because this is where it should be. Let's get it that way. One can only hope. Keep yourselves safe out there. Defend yourselves by any means, ne by any means necessary. Trust the police, uphold the police, but also at the same time, Let's do criminal justice reform wherever it's necessary. But let's take a balanced approach by any means possible. Let's all come together and bring shit back to where it was before. We can do it. We're already, we can do it. <clears throat> we should do it. If we all come together and do it, leadership and community-wise, I believe we can get it done. And let's do it so we can get it done. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. But um, So thank you all for listening. Thank you for, I know this is a long-ass video, but I want to tide you guys over because I know I haven't been making many videos for the past like week or so. I've been busy dealing with the shit with my car and whatnot. I got a new car. It should be ready by tomorrow. So shit, it looks like stuff with me is going to be back to normal. So I'm back in a better place now. I'm probably going to get my car by tomorrow at some point. I'll try to stream either Thursday or Friday. 
I'll definitely start doing some more streams. Stay tuned for more videos, more content, more stuff in the works. Stay tuned to find out more and more videos on the way. I'll see you all again in the next stream, next video, premiere, whatever it happens to be. I'll see you all again soon, and I'll see you all again in the next content coming soon. This is Zach the Celtics guy coming your way, and I'll see you all again soon, and I promise it will be soon. And I'll see you all again next time. Peace out. Have a good and safe day or night or wherever you are, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now. Peace out. See you later. And stay safe.